by request tonight's video is about making a street map sign so let's get started there are several programs um, and websites that will create custom maps for you but the one that I like to use is mapstyle.withgoogle.com and once I came across this I went ahead and added it to my bookmarks so that I could access it quickly next time so once you get to this website, you want to create a style. And then you'll see this search address bar up here. So that's where you'll type in your city and state. Then you can click to zoom into the general area that you're interested in. And it's going to be already clicked on this standard option here but just make sure that you keep it there and after that you'll want to go down here to more options and click on that link scroll down until you find road click on the arrow beside that and then click on the arrow at all click this box to check color on and instead of yellow we want to change all the road colors into black so select one of those and click OK. Now for me, it was important to also show the local airport. So what I did for that was go to the transit section and then click on airport arrow. And this time I did the stroke fill and changed that to black. And I found out that for the streets I did the fill in with black, but you couldn't make out anything when I did that for the airport. So if something in your map does that, um, you might want to try using the stroke fill instead. And then we'll zoom out and make sure that we have everything that we're interested in on our map. And you'll notice that my road signs are also labeled in black but I'm not interested in having any of that on my map, so I'll click this back button up here, which will bring us back to this page, and then I'll go down to my label slider and make sure that that slid all the way down to the bottom. So that removes all of the name labels from our roads. You can also play around with the landmark slider. Um, I played around with it and found out that at a certain point it erased my airport off of the map, so I like to turn it all the way up for this city because it shows me all the features that I'm interested in. You can also play around with the road slider. Maybe you want less detail or maybe you want just major interstates in the area. But for this purpose, we're going to go ahead and slide it all the way back up to the top. And once you're happy with your map, we're going to make it in full screen mode by pushing this icon over here on the right. And then you want to zoom in as far as the detail that you're wanting. And that's a little bit too close, so I'm going to zoom back out again. And then rearrange my map so it shows the amount of city that I want. And now we're going to take a screenshot. And if you're using a Windows computer, you can take a snip by holding down the Windows key, Shift, and S at the same time. And if you're using a Mac, then you'll want to use your Grab tool. So I have a Windows computer, so I just push the Windows Shift and S, which brings up Snip, and I'll click this option, which will take a snip of my whole window. And that has just taken my screenshot and copied it to my clipboard. Now we're done with that, and you can just close back out of it by pressing the Escape key. Back in Silhouette Studio, you can right-click and press Paste to bring up your map that's saved to your clipboard. Now if you had to save your map file to your computer, you can import it by going to File and hitting Open and then finding it on your computer. And I'm going to zoom in here so I can see a little bit better. And then I'll go to this butterfly looking icon which brings up the Trace panel. Click on Select Trace Area. And then you'll want to draw a box around the area that you're interested in tracing. And this yellow right now that it's showing up to trace is a little bit hazy still, so I'm going to increase that threshold so that the lines become darker. 
and once I go too far some of these other pieces start to show up and you can always fine tune that by using your up and down arrows over here and you can also expand your trace box if you need to. So now I'm satisfied with how this looks like it's going to trace so I'll click the trace button and once it's finished it'll turn into the red lines and now I can drag my original away and go ahead and delete that. I'll close this window and then click on this and I want to fill it in with black because we'll be able to visualize it better so go to the palette and hit black and I'll also get rid of the red outlines by going over here to the left and using the no fill option. Now I'll show you how to do the name. The first thing you need to do is to create a rectangle from your left hand panel and make it about the width of your map. And then since I'm going to ultimately want this to engrave, I'll go ahead and fill it in black. Then I'll click on the A so I can go ahead and start typing my city and state text out. And I'll go ahead and also fill this in with a white color so that I can see it while I work. Click on your A cursor over here on the right panel to choose the font that you want. And the font I use is called Airfly. Once your font is selected, you can drag it over to your rectangle that you created and resize it to fit into the box how you'd like it. And once you get that situated, you can click on both the rectangle and your city and state name and center it together by pushing this crosshairs button up here at the top menu. So that has just aligned our city and state within our rectangle. And since I want my city and state to be raised up and all this black area around it to be engraved out, I'm going to go ahead and subtract this from the rectangle. So I'll do that by selecting both of those objects again and then going over here to the modify panel and clicking on the subtract option. And before clicking away I'll right click and tell it to group back together. So I could have left the Columbus Georgia in a white color and told the Glowforge uh, to perform another function with the white color but I just prefer it this way to go ahead and subtract it out so that it's less I have to tell my Glowforge to do. Now I'll position my city and state right underneath my map. I like to do it so that the black rectangle just touches the edge of the black of the map. And I'll widen this out a little bit also. Now if you still need to cut your whiteboard material out then you'll need to create another rectangle by going over here to the left panel again and then making your rectangle shape whatever size you want your final project to be. So say you wanted it to be 12 by 18 we'll just go up here and change our width and height to those measurements and now I'm going to group all this together by selecting it all right click and group and I like to leave about an inch border around mine so if my frame was 12 by 18 I'll make this 11 by 17. Then you can take your rectangle and drag it onto your map, select both your rectangle and your map and click the crosshairs again to make everything centered. And of course the last step is to right click and hit group. So now our map would be finished and what we have here is the red rectangle that will perform the cut function and then everything that's in black will be engraved. Now just to back up for a second, if you didn't want to engrave your city and state in this style where everything is engraved around it, then you can easily just type out the name of your city and state and change your font to whatever color you're using for engraving. In my example here we're using black. And instead of doing the rectangle and all of that, you can just simply type it out and drag it into your area. This option here will have your city and state engraving 
just like the roads are, whereas this option will have around it engraved out so that the city and state is the raised part. So two options there, whichever one you like best. I want to use this option, so I'll move it back over there. And since I already know my piece is 7.5 by 8 inches, I'm going to group all this together and then readjust it for the size that I need. And here's another tip, since I already have my material cut out, I don't necessarily need this red line, but once we get into the Glowforge user interface, it will help me keep everything lined up and centered to my material. We'll get this saved by clicking File, Save As, and change your file type to SVG. And I saved one of these earlier, so I'm just gonna override that file. And now we'll head over to our Glowforge user interface. Here in our design library, we'll hit the upload button, select your file, and click open. So here is my design and my piece of whiteboard that's in my Glowforge bed. Now I forgot that I roughly measured my material. So the trick I was going to show you with keeping your outer cut line is that if I had measured it accurately, I could have lined up that to make sure that my design was centered onto my material. But since I didn't, I will just eyeball it. And honestly, since I've done the calibration, the placement is pretty spot on. So if you are using that as a guide, at that point, you don't really want it to cut, so you can just go to your shape and click ignore. And to freeze frame here for a second, if you still need to cut out your material, just click on the cut tab and enter the manual settings of full power and 150 speed. That was the setting I found most glow forgers were using for this Home Depot whiteboard material. While I was cutting it, I did notice some flare up. It wasn't enough that made me stop the cut, but I did want to make you aware of that possibility. Usually when I cut this whiteboard, I do it on our table saw, but if you don't have one of those available to you, then obviously you can use the Glowforge. If I were to cut with the Glowforge again, I would probably try it with the white side down and see if that affected the amount of flare-up that I saw. And the material here, you can click on Use Uncertified. I'm just going to tell it that it's draft board even though it's not. And then we'll hit this gear icon to set the focus so that it reads the material height from the laser head correctly. And while it's doing that, we can see that our streets have automatically uploaded to engrave, but our city and state is right now on cut, so you want to make sure that's also engraved. And the settings I use for the whiteboard are the SD graphic engrave and then I change the speed to 1000 if it's not there already and then I change the power to around 50. I really find that I like it anywhere between about 30 and 60 and you'll also want to click away from that. Don't click your back button. If you haven't found that out yet, once you put custom settings in, you're going to want to click to the side to get out of that. So now we also need to change those settings for our streets. So I'll do the same thing. Click this arrow, make sure it's at 1000, and also change that to 50. Now click to the side. Okay, now everything's like I like it. And I'll go ahead and click print on this and head over to the Glowforge. This engraving takes about 55 minutes. And again, my size is only 7.5 by 8 inches, so if you make it larger, these are going to be some of your longer engraved times. So of course we'll speed this video up and chop it down some to get through that faster.
The best part about this whiteboard is that it comes out practically already finished. You can see a little bit of light brown charring that's going on there, but it's simple to clean off. I'm just going to use a wet paper towel. It's just a paper towel with water on it and rub over this to remove some of that charring. If you have any parts that are being difficult to remove, you can also use alcohol on your paper towel. Now because I have this little bit of a border around the edges, I would then cut my frame pieces to fit along that side. And what I would do then is flip it over and use my brad nailer to send the brads through the back of this so that it goes through the back and then also makes contact with the frame that's on the front side. I love how this project turned out and I love using this whiteboard from Home Depot because it does engrave so nicely and cleans up so easily. I think these city-state maps could be great for Valentine's Day that's coming up. You could print off cities that are significant to you or to your customers. I've also thought that they may look cool on coasters just to print out some different locations that I've traveled to and have them around the house. Let me know what your thoughts are and what projects you're going to use with these maps. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button so you can catch all of my future videos. And if you'd like to request a tutorial for my future videos, also drop that in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.